Hello and good morning everyone. Uh, this is our second video for the MDDOP class. My name is Albert Gusty and today we are going to draw a simple piston. Just practice our work with your normal geometric types of drawings in 3D. So, uh, of course, like I said in the previous video, it's best to start with your coordinate system set at zero. So you're going to start at your exact zero point when drawing anything in 3D. Now I'll add a picture onto this video so that you can see how the, how a, the piston should look like. Uh, but those of you who know how a piston looks like know that a piston is cylindrical so we are going to use a cylinder to draw this piston with. Now to make things a little easier for yourself while you're drawing in 3D, I always suggest to go here up top, add view and change your view to shades of grey. This will make it a little easier to see how the drawing would look like uh, while you are drawing it. And to rotate your box here at the top corner so that it is in isometric. In this case, just click on this corner so you can see the top, left and the front views. Now to start the piston we are obviously going to start with a cylinder so we select the cylinder and as we spoke about in the previous video we are going to start in our zero point. Now our zero point is going to be zero comma zero comma zero and you press enter then it will automatically start to draw the piston in uh, from the originating exactly from the zero point. So it will make it easier later on to draw the piston and to move other parts of the piston to itself. You'll see later on what I'm talking about. Now for this instance I'm going to use a radius of 50 and then I'm going to press enter and then I could choose the height or the piston. Right, you'll see why I'm not going to use the height of the entire piston as seen on the drawing there in the corner uh, because we need to put add in grooves for the piston rings. And to do that, it's actually quite easy. There's a few ways of doing it, I'll show you the easiest way to do it. Right, so first, the first part of the piston I'm going to draw out is 100 millimeters high. And press enter and presto, there's the base of my piston. Right, now I want to start adding in the grooves for my piston, uh, for my piston rings. Now the first one will be for my oil ring, so I choose a cylinder again. Right, but instead of trying to click on top of the piston and trying to find the exact center of it, you can type in the coordinates of that point, which is going to be zero my x axis, zero my y axis, but the top of this piston is a hundred millimeters from your base zero on my z axis. So I will type in one hundred and press enter. Now you'll see it will start to draw the cylinder exactly on top of the main cylinder for this piston. But now we need to type in the radius of the cylinder first. In this case I want the groove to be 5 millimeters deep. So I'm going to make the radius 45 and I'm going to press enter. Now, we, now I can actually type in the height of that groove. Now in a lot of instances you can either drag your mouse up and then add the dimension or you can just type in a positive number because what sometimes happens is you want to draw the cylinder going inside the base uh, cylinder but if you don't type in a negative number and you don't indicate it with your mouse then it will draw it upwards right so in this case I want the groove to be three millimeters uh, high so I'm going to type in three enter now I've got a basic groove for my oil ring already drawn out now so that's fine I don't need to worry about anything else right now now I want the next uh, groove 
and for that I want you to draw it on top of this one the same as I did here so I'm going to type in my coordinates which is going to be 0, comma, 0, comma, 103 because the base cylinder is 100 millimeters plus the 3 millimeter thickness of this groove right type in enter and you'll see uh, you see a circle here uh, that indicates the edge of the groove underneath the cylinder you're drawing now but I'll show you how to merge all the parts together as a single part a little later on now I'm going to type in the radius for the cylinder and it is 50 millimeters now I can obviously now type in the height of my cylinder and I want that groove to be 3 millimeters thick enter and that's about it when you do the same to get the other two compression ring grooves so again 0, 0, 106 because it's a thickness of this groove and this groove plus 100 millimeters for the base of the piston type in enter type in the radius enter then of course the height of the cylinder is going to be 3 enter when you just add in the, the next groove which is going to be 0, 0, 109 type in the radius which is 50 type in the height is 3 enter now I've got the groove for the oil ring and one for the compression ring but I still need one more groove for the second compression ring those of you that have worked on automotive engines or any lawnmower, petrol or diesel engines and uh, as a basic knowledge of mechanics and mechanical engineering would understand why you have to grooves for the compression rings but anyways we're getting off topic here so now I just want to add the last groove here so the center is going to be 0, 0, uh, 12 enter sorry it's going to be 0, 0, 112 because it's the height of all these grooves added with the base and the radius is going to be 45 height is going to be 3 and then I'm going to add the top of the piston so it's going to be 0, 0, 115 enter radius is going to be 50 and the height is 5 millimeters and there you've got the basic shape of a piston right but now see every time you want to sell uh, or if you want to select the piston it will only select the base or only the top part of this groove that's because these are technically just a bunch of cylinders drawn on top of each other instead of being rendered as a solid part now to fix this you highlight everything when you go here to solid editing and you'll see here is a button called union solid union if you click on that it would uh, give out your selection box and you click on everything you want to uh, merge into each other you press enter you'll see when you highlight it it's drawn as a single part right so if I undo that you see I still can uh, select everything separately and if I go to my 2D wireframe you see it is a bunch of different parts alright so if I go back to shades of grey and I use union again to add in all the parts and to make it one solid piece and I go back to 2D wireframe you see there are some changes they are very minor but uh, when you get more experience when you'll start to see the differences it's a little tricky uh, to see in the wireframe but you understand what I'm getting at um, alright now I've got the basic shape of my piston 
but as I always say when doing any drawing on computer especially to all my students is to save constantly so I'll just say save as my desktop you see I've already drawn a piston but don't worry about that so now every time when you've done a certain part of a drawing you click save alright but just remember in 3d it can get a little tricky and you want to sometimes backtrack a little bit so it's not always an exceptionally good idea to save every five minutes maybe save every time you're confident for drawing is correct up to that point because you can't undo once you've saved a drawing right now I want a hole for the gudgeon pin inside of my piston right now to do that uh, there are a few methods of doing it uh, I just found the easiest method is the one I'm going to show you now which is to draw a separate cylinder and then to use solid subtract to cut away that second cylinder out of a piston All right. so I'm going to explain it to you guys as simply as I can so I'm just going to my front view and I want the hole to be yeah, in the middle, right? So I'm just going to turn it into isometric so that it's a bit easier to see. And I'm going to draw a new cylinder, but remember in AutoCAD 3D it will always draw the cylinder uh, standing upright, right? The same as here. You don't have really an option to rotate it while you're drawing it, right? But to make things easier, draw the cylinder so that it's also on your zero point point but much higher than the piston itself so I'm going to type in 0 comma 0 comma let's say 200 right and let's say we want the hole for the gudgeon pin to be uh, let's say 50 millimeters in diameter so I type in 15 radius and then the height of the cylinder doesn't really matter but it's good to choose a height so that you can remember it when you have to move it around because I'll show you later why it's a good idea to choose a, uh, a set height for that cylinder so in this case I'm going to use 120 millimeters you can use any height that you want to but I always suggest keeping a little notebook with you to write out the sizes of the parts that you're drawing so that it's easier for you to uh, remember what coordinates to use right now I want to rotate this uh, cylinder here so I'm going to use 3D rotate because if you are just going to use normal rotate it will only rotate it around its X and Y axes not around its Z axes right I'll explain to you uh, so you're going to choose this button up here uh, looks like a funny ball thingy it says 3D rotate then it will say select object so you're going to select the cylinder type enter then it will ask you the base point alright now in this case uh, you drew it exactly in the center of your X and your Y axis so it's 0 comma 0 comma the height is 200 the height of the base above uh, the zero point is 200 millimeters but I want it exactly in the center of my cylinder so it will make it easier for me to move it in place right so I drew my cylinder 200 millimeters high from my zero point on my z-axis so it's 200 plus this half of the cylinder so it's 260 enter you see this uh, if this widget didn't move then you know you did it correctly and you chose the correct I mean uh, the correct uh, coordinate All right so because this is a front view of my cylinder I want the hole to be on this side of the cylinder so I'm not going to rotate it around this axis but I'm going to rotate it around this one right but I ask you to pick a rotation axis now these circles here indicate your rotational axes and you can choose any one of these to rotate your drawing around right I'm going to choose a red one 
because I wanted to rotate about my x-axis and it will ask you your uh, start angle uh, you'll see uh, just rotate it till it's at or move your mouse until it snaps to 180 degrees but remember for this to work your polar tracking has to be uh, on right so you can check for 180 90 or even uh, uh, 0 degrees if you want to I just use any one that's closest in this case 180 and then I just make sure that it snaps correctly in place and I click again and the cylinder is rotated correctly right so if I go to my front view it will show you exactly where the cylinder and my piston is in, re in relation to each other now I just want to move this piston downward All right. Uh, I want the hole for for the gadget pin to be 60 millimeters from the bottom so it's going to be 260 minus the 60 this difference it's going to be 200 millimeters alright so I'm going to select it click move click the center point here I'm using only 2D move that's because I only needed to move in one direction of course and I'm in my front view here so I can just use 2D move so I click there at the center of a uh, cylinder and you see So as you can see in your front view you see the piston and you see the cylinder. Right. Now I need to uh, move this cylinder so that it sits 60 millimeters from the bottom of my cylinder so I can cut in a hole for my gadget pin. To do that it's actually quite easy. You just need to move it down. So I'm going to use 3D move. You see uh, it's got a, a strange symbol here under modify. Uh, you click that and it will ask you to select the object you click on the cylinder type enter you click the base point you can just use the normal center point because we're only going downwards right so you don't want it to move up or down in and out uh, with your uh, x or your y axis you type in zero for your x axis comma zero for your y axis but you want it 200 millimeters down so you type in minus 200 minus 200 because you want the cylinder to go downward if any time you want to move something downward you need to type in a negative number and you type in enter and you see it moves the cylinder uh, downward to the exact point where I want it if I go into isometric you'll see that it's actually going straight through the piston that I drew earlier right but I want it to be a hole not a cylinder right now to remove a cylinder and to take out the material that's the same shape of a cylinder I use subtract so then I'm going to click on the piston type in enter click on the cylinder the second time type in enter and as you can see it took away the cylinder along with the material that it had occupied right remember this is a very abstract way of doing drawings 3d is a little bit abstract compared to other two-dimensional drawings to do so it's best to practice this until you understand it quite well right now we need to make the piston hollow because remember no piston is solid right so and the way we are going to do this we are also going to use the subtract function alright so I'm going to draw a cylinder that's exactly in the middle of my piston alright so I'm going to type in the coordinates of 0 comma 0 comma 0 type in enter but I don't I want the wall thickness of my piston to be at least 5 millimeters so I draw it uh, for radius as 45 enter now you can type in the height as you can see the height I can go straight through the part that I want to right but I obviously don't want that and in this case I want it to be 
don't want it to go deeper than the groove of my uh, of my o ring yeah so I'm going to take it only about 90 millimeters up type in 90 enter and it's done right now I want to remove the cylinder now along with the material that it is occupying in this piston as well so I'm choosing a solid subtract I click on my piston type in enter and I click on that cylinder and type in enter and it removes uh, that part of my piston okay so now we need to draw in the flanges for this piston now to do it it's actually uh, a little tricky in some cases but uh, if you work carefully then it's not as difficult as you would think right now the way we do is you would want to draw it separately from your piston it will make it easier to modify and to make it fit afterwards right so what we are going to do is we are going to draw a separate cylinder that's a larger diameter of the cylinder you'll see why later but it's got the same inner diameter from this inside part of the piston to the next side right now to do this we select cylinder and we type in the starting coordinates we want it to be 200 millimeters away from the piston in my x-axis the same as we normally use uh, type in comma we type in zero for my y-axis because we don't want to move it in that direction the direction of that green line and we still want it to be on my zero point on my z-axis so I type in zero enter now I can type in the diameter of the outside diameter any size should be fine doesn't matter the height however should be about the same but if you keep it at 100 it should be fine right now you want a cylinder that's the exact same diameter as my inside diameter of this piston so you can either type in the coordinates again or just select the center point of the cylinder if you want to save a little bit of time when you type in the radius of that inside diameter which is going to be 45 enter type in the height which is 100 or you can take it back to the center point there at the top and that's it now you can subtract uh, the smaller ring from the larger ring so you, uh, select the large uh, cylinder type in enter select the small cylinder type in enter and it will remove it right now I need the to draw in the flange in here so that I can cut away the radius that I need so that it will fit into the piston without causing any other issues now to do this is actually quite easy we do it the same way as we got the hole in this piston is itself so we're going to choose its starting point for the center of the cylinder we're going to do it to the same uh, position on the x-axis as uh, the cylinder itself so we type in 200 comma uh, we still want it to be 0 on my y-axis type in 0 comma and we type it 200 millimeters from the base of my uh, main cylinder type in enter right and now you can type in the radius of the cylinder itself for the flange in this case I want the flange to be 50 millimeters in diameter so I want the radius to be 25 type in enter and then I can type in the height itself for height doesn't really matter that much but I like to keep it a certain uh, uh, dimension itself and it makes it easier to figure out where the center point of the cylinder is going to be so I'm going to make it let's say uh, 100 millimeters enter but as I said earlier it's nice to have a piece of scrap paper to scratch all your dimensions onto make notes and it will make it a lot easier for you to find the correct uh, coordinates for all the parts that you're doing especially if you're doing something a little bit more complicated now I want 
to hollow out this cylinder. To do that, that's quite easy. We're just going to draw another smaller cylinder inside of here. And in this case, we can just select the center point of the cylinder. Type in the radius. In this case, it's going to be 15 because I want it to be the same radius as my gudgeon pin. Type in enter. Type in the height. Click. And there it's done. And I'm going to subtract the two from each other. So I'm going to click on that. Enter. Click on that. Enter. It will cut it out. Right. Now I can just rotate this part again. So I highlight it. Rotate. Center point is going to be 200, comma, 0, comma, 100 plus. It's going to be 250. Enter. Going to use a red ring because we used it uh, drawing in the hole for my piston itself. So we're going to use a red ring again. Click and click once it snapped into position right now I want this cylinder to be 100 or oh, 60 millimeters from the bottom of the cylinder the same as here to make things a lot easier for myself in the future so I'm going to move it again so I'm going to choose the center points can be 200 by 0 by 250 enter now you can see you move it around any way you want it, but it's easier to use your coordinates in this case. So I'm going to use, I'm not going to move it on my x-axis, not going to move it on my y-axis, but I'm going to move it lower. So 60 millimeters lower is 190 millimeters. So I'm going to go down minus 190, enter, and it will draw it in for you. Right. Now I want to subtract this cylinder from this so that I get a correct curvature. You'll see a bit later what I mean by that. So I'm going to subtract uh, this one from this one and it will give me the correct curvature. Right. Now you'll need this curvature uh, to fit exactly inside this piston because we might want to add a little fillet to make it look more authentic a little later on. But now this uh, cylinder only needs to move to my left. Right, so we're going to highlight it. Choose 2D move because it's only going to move on my uh, x-axis. So I type in the center point of my x-axis or the center point of my cylinder on my x-axis is 200, comma, 0 on my y-axis and 60 on my z-axis, enter. I only wanted to move 200 millimeters to my left, so I type in uh, minus 200 because it's moving to my left. Type in enter. And why hasn't it moved? Right, so we're going to try it again. Move. A base point is going to be 200, comma 0, comma 60, enter. It's going to move 200 millimeters in this direction. So I wanted to move uh, minus 200 my x axis, comma 0 my z, uh, y axis, and 0 on my z axis. Type enter, and it should move to a great spot. Right. Now see it fits in exactly, doesn't overlap here or give you any strange shapes here. That's why I did it separately. Right. But now if we look at the bottom view, let's just rotate it correctly. You see that we need to remove a piece here so that the connecting rod will fit into the piston. To do that it's actually quite easy. Uh, we just need to draw in another box so that we can subtract the box from this part of the cylinder. Alright, so we're going to use 25, comma 25, comma 0, enter. We're going to type in the dimension, which is going to be minus 50, comma minus 50, enter, height 90, enter. 
you see why once we're starting to remove the material. Alright, now we're going to subtract uh, this one from this one. And you'll see it will cut away this part nice and neatly. Alright, so there is a very, very simple piston. Of course, you can add a lot more detail, but that's the basics of how to use union and subtract to uh, get a very specific shape that you want to and to draw something as simple as a piston. Of course, you can go into detail now and draw in the oil hulls and uh, the slits here for the uh, uh, split pins and uh, the spring pins to keep the gudgeon pin in place and of course you can add the fillets here at the radius to make it look more like a casting and yeah so there's a lot of things you can still do and I hope this video gave you guys some extra clarity on how to use three dimensional drawings in AutoCAD and by the way I used the workspace 3D modeling because 3D basics doesn't have all the functions you would need to do this. Right. So thank you for watching and stay safe and I, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.